Hi, I'm Craig Phillips. In this video, I'm going to show you how to prepare and paint a metal radiator. First of all, we're going to have to clean the surface and check to see if it's suitable to repaint it. I'm going to start by covering up my floor to protect it. Normally, you can have your dust sheets or cardboard. I've got some small old towels that are suitable for jobs like this. Then I'm going to clean it up. I've got some warm water. Pour a small amount of your sugar soap into some warm water and give it a good mix up with your sponge. Using your sponge, apply it to the surface and give it a good scrub all over, making sure to achieve good coverage to get rid of all the dirt and grease. Cleaning with sugar soap helps your painter stick without hampering the adhesion. Then wipe off your sugar soap using a damp cloth, making sure you've cleared the whole area. Now it's scrub clean, I've got some warm water. I'm just going to give it a rinse off and dry it. So now the radiator is clean and dry, you can have a good inspection of the existing paints. It may have had many layers on there in the past to see what condition it is. If there are any bits that are flaking off there or loose, they must be removed, scraped off and then heavily sanded down until you get a smooth finish. But this is looking quite in good nick all over. I'm just going to give it a gentle little sand now with a light to medium sandpaper. Now it's also at this point, if you do see any old drips that have dried out, could have been there a long time, you do need to sand them out because if you apply your new paint on top of it, all that's going to do is enhance that drip. A quick wipe back down again. Make sure you get off all the dust. And another quick dry off. And now you can start to see that the surface itself is prepared. You can see that this has been scraped at one point and it might be a little bit of rust coming through. If it is the case, you can apply a small layer of metal primer, a Zinza Bullseye will be perfect on there before you actually paint it. Now that's took care of them rust spots on there. We'll leave that to dry. My next stage is I wanna protect the surfaces around where I'm not going to paint, which is the plaster work behind here. Some of the detailed work on the side there where the plumber it may need to get or you need to bleed the radiator. And of course, the valves here and the pipe work. So you can use different types of masking tape for this. Some with polyphene, some paper ones and some standard masking tape. When masking up these areas, do take your time to assure you mask it right. This will ensure that you don't get any excess paint on the areas where it's not required. Okay, so that's the pipe we're covered on both sides and at the top. The next stage is I want to protect this wall around the back of it there. So I'm going to be using a masking tape with some paper attached to it. Once your cover tape has been rolled out and applied to the wall, you can then take the corners down to stop it moving or touching the radiator. And some radiators are different sizes and shapes and the tops of them and the depth of them will also differ. So whether you're going to paint this with a paintbrush or a roller or not, and you're trying to get these bits at the top here where you can't generally see unless you're looking directly above them. It's just a way to avoid any splashes going onto the back. Uh, paintwork behind it there is covered up and I'll do the same again both sides and below. So now we're masked, we're ready to start painting. The paint I'm using is French Cheeks Trim Paint and the colour is Cool Beans, which is one of the colours out of the Samaritans range. I'm starting my paint in the top corner, painting the recesses on the radiator first. French Cheeks Trim Paint is quick and easy to apply and makes it simple to cover areas like this. It's a soft satin sheen water-based chalk and mineral paint formulated for trims, skirting boards and doors. It's also suitable for other interior woodwork, powder coated radiators and all sorts of furniture, including laminate. It's low VOC content and low odor. No priming or undercoat is required for any surface except bare metal, in which case use a suitable metal primer. Now, whatever type of surface you're painting, like a radiator, which is an uneven surface and you're applying it on with a paintbrush, the idea is spreading an equal amount of paint over the whole surface, but being very cautious where the recesses are there, which are quite vulnerable for drips to build up on. So I've applied it across more or less half the radiator here. And then I'll just 
feather over it with the brush with kind of no more paint on. Just making sure that I don't have any drips in those areas. It's just a matter of touching it gently with the edge of the brush and dragging it down like this. What we don't want to be doing is pushing up on it hard where it'll catch that lip and potentially drip down. You can go over and over it a couple of times for the first few minutes before it starts to react and dry off. So that's the first layer now applied on the face of it. I'm now going to turn my attention to doing the top lip here and these edges and down the both sides as well where it's a bit more trickier to get at. And then by the time I've applied it on there, five or 10 minutes, I'll be able to tell whether we've got any drips along the front, which we shouldn't have. Now that's my first coat applied. I'm gonna leave this to dry before I apply the second coat. Now do check the instructions on the side of your tin because drying times may vary in different conditions and the time of the year. However, I've used a standard paintbrush here because this style radiator, I can get it everywhere that I need to. Sometimes, you might need to use a thing called the radiator roller depending on the depth and the sizes where you can get further behind the radiator if it is seen from the front. And of course you can get angled brushes as well designed for painting awkward areas like radiators. Now my first coat is dry, I'm gonna apply a second coat, but this time using the radiator roller. Get plenty on the actual roller itself and there is a fair bit on this roller so again you've got to be cautious that you're not getting the drips in it if you've chose to use a radiator roller to apply your paint on once you've covered the area do feather it off using a paintbrush. This will help it to self-level and dry flat. But remember when painting any surfaces like this, it's not a race. Take your time to ensure you get the best results. Now my second coat is dry. I'm gonna give it a tickle again with the sandpaper pad. It's not to help the next coat actually key to it. It's just sometimes you have a bit of molecules floating around in the air that could settle on it and it just needs taken off and this is the perfect thing for it. Now in most cases, two coats is ample, but on this particular occasion, I'm going to apply a third one. I'm using a small handheld paint spray. I'm going to start going up and down, ensuring my third coat gives it another full and even coat. That's my radiator now complete. Three solid coats and it looks brand new. Bearing in mind, this was about 15 years old, this radiator, and it had a variety of different layers of paint on there. Couple of things to remember. Leave it for at least 48 hours before you turn the heating back on, and then just turn the temperature up gradually over a couple more days after the drying time. But it's not fully cured until about three weeks in normal condition. So do be careful if you're pushing furniture up against it. Now, if you're looking for more inspiration, head over to the French Chic Fan Forum on Facebook. But if you just want to know more about the vast range of products that French Chic sell, check out their website, frenchchicpaint.co.uk.